If you're a student like me, exam season is probably right around the corner. <sighs> yes, I hate that as well. It's funny how our school and colleges have always taught us what to study, when to study, where to study, but not how to study. It's really hard to find out which study technique is a good use of your time. I really want you all to be productive queens and kings. So today I'm going to be trying six effective study techniques and finding out which one's the best. At the end of the video, I'm going to be rating all of these methods. So let's start. First on the agenda, we have the Pomodoro technique. I'm pretty sure most of you guys have heard of it. It's a productivity time wizard. You basically divide your long hours of work into a big chunk of work time and small chunk of break. For example, the most practiced one is the 25 minute work session with a 5 minute break session. So for those 25 minutes, you study without any distraction, you give all your focus and all your concentration to the work that you're assigned. And then you get a 5 minute mini vacation where you can refresh and rejuvenate yourself. This technique works on the idea of small and intense productivity bursts that can lead to more efficient work, better concentration and improved creativity. Okay, so I tried this method and I wrote some pros and cons after it. So let's go through them. Pros are, it increases your focus and concentration. No doubt, for those 25 minutes, I gave my best because I felt 25 minutes to hell. It prevents burnout. Instead of working for three hours straight, if I just work for 25 minutes, it will prevent burnout. Third, it gives you a clear structure for works and breaks. My time is pretty much organized. The cons, how rigid is the time interval? 25 minutes and then a break and then you have to work for 25 minutes. I think this just broke my flow and concentration instead of building it half the time. Honestly, I don't know. I haven't taken a break for 5 minutes. If I took a break, I took a proper 15 minutes. I don't think we were like super focused, honestly. I think the pomegranate technique is not pomegranating, guys. Like, it takes 10 minutes to settle in properly. PR session under 10 minutes. Yeah, that is also a technique, but the most followed one is 25-5. So I thought to go with that. Also, because like, I'm the type of person who wants to sit down, I want to study till I'm not exhausted. Now, second up, we have the Cornell note-taking method. This method is a note-taking ninja move. It's all about making your notes shine. So what exactly is the Cornell method? It's a systematic approach to taking and organizing your notes. It was developed by Walter Pork at the Cornell University and hence you get the name. Here's how you do it. First up first, you divide your page into three sections. On the right side, you have your main notes section. So here you take all your main notes during a lecture or while reading your textbook. On the left side, you write the cue or a question that hints towards the notes on the right side. So for example, if I have written the anatomy of stomach on the right side, on the left side, I would just write anatomy of stomach or what is the anatomy your stomach and on the last column of the right side you basically write a summary or a review of the whole topic i feel like cornell note-taking method is a dream come true for all the people who love to organize things let's talk about the pros it provides a structure format for all your class notes second pro is that it requires active engagement so you have to actively listen i think this will enhance your understanding and retention the third one is obviously the summary section i feel if you have very less amount of time to revise these summary sections are really great to revise very very fast okay now the interesting part the cons Obviously, it is time consuming. You're reading and then taking notes, you're listening and then taking notes. So it is time consuming. If it's a fast paced lecture, this thing becomes very messy. Our third technique is mind mapping. It's a Picasso of productivity, helping you paint your ideas. Talia or just like It's a visual method of organizing your ideas, concepts or information in a structured, radiant and non-linear way. Think of it as a roadmap of your notes. I prefer doing this digitally because it's easier to fit a lot in just one page. Edit it any time, my go-to app for making mind maps is WPS. WPS is an all-in-one free office. You literally get everything here for free. From making documents, to presentations, to sheets. You can literally do anything here. You can use WPS across all platforms, which includes Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS. So it becomes very easy for me to access these notes anytime and anywhere that I want. You can convert these PDFs into Word documents or even an image. I also have an amazing news for you all. So WPS has announced the Christmas event which begins from 5 December. You get a chance to win Xiaomi phone and switch. All you have to do is participate in this luggy draw, share your WPS office related work on social media with the hashtag, hashtag study with WPS or hashtag work with WPS for a chance to win Xiaomi phone and switch. Okay now let's continue making this mind map on WPS. Good morning so right now I woke up I thought yeah, I'm gonna start this day by making a mind map. I would anyways be revising something but in a very different way with a central idea or a topic 
topic in the center, you branch out into the related concepts, subtopics, and then connect them. This method is all about connections and associations. It helps your brain in grasping the big picture while still zooming in on the little details. Honestly, mind maps can be used in a lot of different ways. One is obviously taking notes, but other than that, it's a great way to brainstorm ideas, maybe a business plan, maybe studying notes or something else. It looks so good. Rule number one is that it's great if you're a visual learner. Number two is that since you're making all these connections and finding associations, it helps your brain understand a topic deeply and see the relationship of it with a different concept. Number third, again, it requires your active engagement, which will help you understand better and also help in retaining that concept. When it comes to cons, the first and the very obvious one is how much time it requires. The second one that I personally felt is that you can't really make mind maps of every topic. There are some topics or concepts that you have to learn in a sequential order. Now let's move on to our next technique, the Ivy Lee method. This technique is all about simplicity and focus. It was developed by Ivy Lee, a productivity consultant in the early 1900s. So for making my to-do list and writing my tasks, I'm going to be using WPS as they have so many templates to choose from. They have a huge variety from education, work, office, and so I chose this one. So here's how this method works. At the end of the day, write six most important tasks that you have to complete the next day. Remember to not write more than six tasks. Prioritize the six tasks according to their true importance. So the first task should be the one which is the most important work for tomorrow and the sixth one should be the least important work for tomorrow. Now the next day, you have to focus only on the first task. So you finish the first task and only then you can move to the second task. So okay, if you cannot finish the full list, if something is left out, you move it to the next day. Let's see the pros and the cons of this one. You're focusing on a limited number of important activities in a day. There's a sense of satisfaction because once you start finishing all the most important tasks, by the end of the day, when you're left with only the simpler ones and the less important ones, it feels good. This method is really very simple to do. Let's talk about the cons. So first con, I don't think this technique is meant for multitaskers like me. <laughs> okay, all. Well, it's actually the next day. So I tried Ivy Lee yesterday and I think the method was not good. I hated how I couldn't do the tasks whenever I want to. I had to go in a sequential order which made no sense because the last task which was apparently the least important task was also a task that I could have done anyway. But I couldn't finish it just because I was trying to go in a sequential order. I couldn't finish two tasks, one of which I could have easily done but I didn't. I don't know, not really good reviews about this task but anyway. The next method is probably my favorite method. It is the blurting method. Now this technique is an active recall technique that involves reading a section out of a text quickly then closing your book and writing down as much information as you can remember okay so now i'm gonna be trying the blurting method i've always heard about it but i never did it because i just feel it's a lot of work but today since i'm testing it out i'm just gonna start small with a little topic I see I did not forget a lot of things there are just two things which is good it's really good honestly I feel so damn confident about this subject only thing that I feel is key my notes now are like these could have been really useful notes I just blurted out my bad handwriting as well like jaldi jaldi I was like oh ye bhi aade, ye bhi aade, ye bhi. and my handwriting looks so bad also like it's so unorganized I feel like I'm gonna use this for the most important topics but this was Good. So I have a little input on this. I did absolutely love how much I could remember. It gave me a lot of confidence. But however, I felt that I just lost a potential of having good notes. So then I tried again, but this time I did it digitally. After watching a lecture, I sat down on my MacBook, opened it and started typing as soon as I can all the things that I could remember on WPS document. It has a very user-friendly interface. And so after blurting out all the things that I could remember, I started customizing these notes and voila, I basically had organized aesthetic and clean notes that I could carry anywhere. Now let's talk about the pros and the cons of this one it encourages active recall so as soon as you study something you recall it and your brain retains that memory in a much easier way and for the long term as well it reveals your weak areas of understanding or retaining which allows you to have a targeted revision the third one and my favorite one is that i felt very very confident after doing this technique and i still feel that i might remember at least 80 to 90 percent of what i studied next up we have a technique named after the legend himself richard finman it's called the finman technique it's a method that Finman himself used to master complicated subjects and explain them to others. This is a method where we bring back our childhood nostalgia and play teacher teacher again. So you start by picking a topic to study. Now you're gonna pretend that you're a teacher and teach this topic to someone like a child or someone who is unfamiliar with the topic. If you don't have someone, it's fine.
mind you can pretend to do that on a whiteboard or on a paper or to your little sibling literally anyone use as simple language as you can and now identify your knowledge gaps when you get stuck or can't explain something you go back to your material and study that specific topic in more detail by the end of this if you have fully understood the topic then congratulations you have become a great teacher and you're going to ace your exams as well let's talk about the pros so first it is obviously good for you because you are in a way revising the topic second it helps you understand that topic deeper third it increases the retention and fourth it also helps the other person let's talk about the cons it is time consuming especially if you picked out very complex subjects and second is that you need self motivation to do this or you have to be selfless if you want to do this with someone else last but not the least we have this spaced repetition technique spaced repetition is a study technique that involves reviewing information at increasing intervals of time the goal is to enhance your long term retention you can do this by just reviewing your notes or even by making flashcards so first we have initial learning where we learn a new concept you review the method shortly after it let's say if you studied something in the morning then revise it before you go to bed hey guys today i'm going to be practicing the spaced repetition technique i read something yesterday and today i'm going to be revising it for the first time it's been 24 hours technically so my first revision is after 24 hours this helps to solidify the information in your short term memory now as you're revising the intervals between each revision session increases the next review could be a week after that so you're basically increasing the time intervals spacing out the revisions helps strengthen your memory more effectively starting with the pros it improves the long term retention of the information it focuses on revising the information when you're most likely to forget it which makes the study sessions more efficient and the cons are that it is challenging in the start and you need to be very very patient so okay, now finally has the part that we've all been waiting for reading these methods before i read them i just want you to remember that these techniques might vary from person to person according to their working style and preference it would be beneficial if you experiment these on your own and mix and match to find out which one works best for you okay now coming on to my rating last up i have ivy lee as i said i'm a multitasker so not really for me the number of ivy lee we have the cornell note taking method this is a really good method to take notes but i just feel out of all the other methods this might not be the one for me then we have the pomodoro technique once i get in the flow of studying i don't want anything to disturb me and so to have very rigid time intervals might not just be for me then we have mind maps yes it is very time consuming but in a longer run i've always found mind maps to be very very effective and useful now it's time for top 3 so on number 3 we have spaced repetition this method is great for long term memory it's something i also do during my exam season so it has to be my top 3 on number 2 we have the finman technique again this is something that i always do it is super beneficial for both me and my study partner it's easy it helps in retention and it's overall great and on number 1 drum rolls i think we all have already guessed it's the floating method this is something that i just found i was not following this technique before and i think that is why it hit me the most out of all of these techniques because not only does it help in retention but it also boosts my confidence we tried all of these study techniques and i hope this was very helpful for you all i also have a study playlist on spotify so i'll be linking that in the description to help you all if you still watch till here comment exam season so that i know that you are the real one lots of love to you i will see you guys later in my next video bye ryan little <laughs> yoga